Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today we'll be taking a look at an integration use case where we'll be using Excelate to synchronize tickets between Jira and Azure DevOps. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, a lot more than just tickets. So this particular video will revolve around issue links and how you can handle the different relationships on the two uh, distinct systems. So we'll start off pretty simple whereby we'll have a story on Jira which would sync up to a user story on Azure DevOps so a different work item type. And then we'll have a few tasks and bugs created on Jira, which are obviously linked to our main story. So these are the issue links. And uh, how this will happen is that the tasks on the Jira end would flow over as issues on the Azure end, and the bugs would be as bugs. We kept them simple. Now, in addition to that, the relationship types can be fully customizable, uh, customizably mapped. So blocks would map to a predecessor type of relation and relates would map over to a related one, but I'll show you in the XLA scripts where you can totally, uh, it is totally user defined. It's up to you how you would like to do it. And finally, to close things off, we'll add a subtask to our one of our tasks and how that would map over is like a child uh, on uh, the Azure DevOps end. So this relationship would be a child relationship. So basically the user story would have predecessor with these two, then this one would have a child with this one and, uh, so that's quite a bit to pack into uh, a use case video. So let's get started. Right, so to kick things off, uh, we'll create a user story on uh, our Jira instance. So this would be our main uh, story. Right, let's just open it because we'll, we'll be creating all the links from out here. Now, basically, uh, Xlate is already set up with triggers on the back end, so it will already pick this up and it will try to create a work item on the Azure DevOps side using this. So you can monitor this from the Xlate panel out here. So yeah, as I thought, it's already in progress. It's already trying to create one uh, out on the Azure DevOps side. Right, so now let's quickly create a couple of tasks to uh, which would act as the child issues in this one. So let's say it's just task one. And this is 866, okay. And let's just say task two. And for good measure, let's just create a bug really quickly as well. Right, now, uh, let's take a look at what's happened on the Azure side so far. So. Uh, once the ticket is exhalated automatically, it provides you a direct link into the Azure DevOps environment. So if I open this 9427 link, I'll just get to the Azure DevOps corresponding work item, which would be the test story as it is. Right, so, so far, no links, nothing's happening. It's just a simple test story. Now let's start adding some issue links out here. Now, this was what you saw on the graphic. So if, if you create a blocks relationship, which is what basically we were looking to do, uh, then I can add 866, I believe, to this. Now, what this is going to do is that because this is the, the blocks is mapped to the predecessor type, now this should create an issue link on my main story uh, and the type should be predecessor. Now, we'll do a couple more of those, but we'll just wait for the first one to arrive. And there it is. So the predecessor is linked to task one. Right, now let's go and create all these different other links and see what's happening. So let's just create another link blocks to task two. Uh, it's eight, six, seven. Right, and let's just create another one as well. So this one we wanted to create this. So the bug, we wanted to create it as uh, a relates to. So we have all our three issue links out here. Now these should be reflected on the Azure DevOps. So let's uh, wait for this to sync over and then we'll go to the other side. Okay, so after waiting for a few seconds, we see that the issue is synchronized completely. So we expect these three links now to appear on our Azure story. And yeah, sure enough, the two, two links to the tasks are the predecessor types and the other one is a related one. Now, I hope this makes sense that this relationship, the blocks one, which we created in Jira, 
would reflect as a predecessor one and the relates would reflect as a related one. So let us now add a subtask and show you how that would look like. So what we want to do is we want to add it under task two. So let's go to task two. And we're going to obviously add it from the Jira side, but I just want to show you what the relationship is. So, so far, task two has just got one relationship out here, which is of successor type to test story. Now, let's go to task two and add a subtask. Cool. So now this should reflect as, uh, let's just edit our subtask a little bit as well. Let's add a description. Now, just remember what's happened that the subtask is linked to, is a member of this task, right? Now, when this reflects over on the Azure side, it should reflect as a child, as you saw. And yeah, obviously you'll have the ticket arriving over. So you have the whole hierarchy uh, created from Jira to Azure DevOps in quite a custom uh, fashion, quite a custom uh, manner. Let me just show you uh, the high-level view. So we'll start with the test story, which was our main placeholder. And that had these relationships. And then if we go to task two, that would have two types of relationship, one going backwards to the story and one to forward to the child, which was the subtask in Jira. Right, how does all this happen? Jira simply needs to send out the issue links. That's all that Jira needs to do, right? Everything else happens on the Azure incoming side. This bit of code deals with the parent-child relationships, if any is present. If they're not present, that's fine, it's ignored. Uh, in addition to that, then we run some uh, custom API queries. So this is where the mapping happens, right? So the blocks uh, maps to the dependency reverse, which was the predecessor type of relationship and relates to maps to related, and you can have as many as you want. And from here, we run a custom endpoint uh, whereby we try to add the corresponding links to the Azure DevOps work item. All the code in its entirety is published on the community site. So hopefully this was useful for you. Thank you for watching.